welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and this week I want to feature an Oldsmobile. I haven't done an Oldsmobile in a while, and uh, one of my videos somebody had commented and asked me about uh, uh, one of these, and I'm like, hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea. I do have one. This is a 68 Hurst Olds based on the 442. It's a model I built about 15 years ago. It's uh, uh, fairly old um, as far as some of my builds go, but one of my favorites, and actually when it comes to Olsen building 442s, I really like the 68. Just really like uh, this uh, this body and this layout as far as uh, the hood and the headlights and the trim goes. I'm just very fond of, of this particular car. How this car came about, I found it a very interesting story, especially when it goes back to uh, George Hurst and the Hurst performance and uh, everything that uh, he was involved in and how this car came about. Um, but uh, as you know, Hearst, he, he developed a four-speed shifter, got involved in Pontiac, and Pontiac was installing it in their factory cars as far back as 61, but he had a very good relationship with Pontiac. And as his business grew and um, his ambitions, you know, he loved cars, he was a racer, he was very involved in that. Matter of fact, if you didn't know, he actually created the Jaws of Life for racers and as a way to get him out of roll cages and he um, so that's that's an interesting story all by itself so if you want to read about George Hurst you know he was um, very good with Pontiac and had the, the Hurst performance shifter for the four speeds uh, going like crazy and as he was progressing and he built a couple of very interesting uh, exposition cars starting with the 65 Barracuda Hemi under glass he was racing that and then shortly after that in 66 he had the Hearst Harry Olds the dual engine uh, all-wheel drive uh, monster with a couple of 455s in that thing and uh, but he wanted a street car with his name on it so he actually went to um, John DeLorean and wanted to talk to him and his idea was to take the Pontiac Firebirds with the 400 and swap in the 428 engines and sell them as as Hearst Firebirds and John was all excited about it but uh, um, I guess something happened with GM and and they were trying to push it through and they said no that's not gonna fly which I think is kinda funny because you know other people were taking Camaros and swapping in 427's and Camaros so I mean you look at Yanko and Dana and some of those guys they're swapping motors too but Hearst wanted to do it on a much grander scale. And somebody said, you might want to talk to Oldsmobile. So reading up on some of that, it, I read that Oldsmobile was a little upset that they weren't able to get an F body of their own. So Hearst's like, all right, well, I, you know, I, I really like this car. If we take this car and we take the 400 out of it and swap in a 455, let, let's do that and let's see about that. And Oldsmobile's like, you know what? Yeah, we need something to really grab the youth market. Let's, let's do it. And they were using, and they were squeaking by selling it as a conversion so that uh, GM didn't really know because they had a 400 cubic inch limit on their mid-size cars even though Mopar was putting 440s in their chargers and all their mid-size and even the 426 Hemi so I mean GM was getting spanked and and uh, so and even Ford was putting um, some 427s and 428s in their mid-size cars you know he's like oh let's let's do this so Hearst uh, was getting involved in this and they had developed a couple of prototypes and they had come out with this package building this uh, Hearst Olds 442 with the 455 engine instead of the 400 engine and uh, another thing I thought was interesting and, and I mean I, I did mess up a little bit I built this one as a four speed kind of it's got the manual tranny but only two of the 515 made uh, supposedly had the a manual tranny and I guess they were both prototypes are kind of special um, supposedly two exist one of them was was uh, destroyed by GM on an accident or something like that that's why I said there was a second one built but it was a prototype but uh, I believe all of the 515 that are known to have built and built were all automatics probably won't find a stick of one of these but I think a stick would be really cool but for some reason the package was automatic only and that included the 69s but in 68 um, they did Proverbian silver, which I used a German silver metallic on this one from testers in the little bottle. They, they were silver with black, and then they did the black out back here. So they had uh, some fun with it, and I think a very attractive color combo and package here. But uh, she looks 
she looks really good um, so I really wanted to build one of these so but this one this one's actually built from the AMT kit and a model house conversion which I've got um, extras to kind of show you what was involved in that but uh, most of the kit is right from the AMT as you can see there's the 455 and it's you know dimensionally it's really no different than the 400 cubic inch um, the big difference is um, for 68 and 69 the 44 the 455 s were painted red just like the inner fenders are done red on the Yosem builds but this kept all the rest of the the factory uh, ram air induction or cold air induction that's under the bumper here so you can see all the ducts and the air cleaner these are all right from the kit so I really didn't do much anything other than change out the hood well this is a model house hood and it kept falling off so I actually added pins here so I glued those pins in to keep it from falling because it slid off all the time so that's how I keep the hood on and then the front bumper pretty much just goes right on now I did some creative work trying to remove the 442 you see I didn't do the greatest job in there but I removed the 442 from the front bumper and here's the induction on those and then the rest of the body is pretty much right from the kit other than adding these vent windows and then you modify the rear for this 68 rear bumper which these are pretty much right from Johan um, copies of theirs and they're virtually they fit the AMT body and then you just got to fill in the uprights and the tail lights and then the chassis is right from the kit see there's where mine has a manual tranny and that's where uh, um, I had left that there and then if you look inside the interior let's get this light in here a little bit better you can see the his and hers automatic shifter so I put the automatic shifter in there and the console in there but I ended up leaving the four speed pedals in there so the four speed pedals are in there so I kinda left it a four speed and that's about the only inaccuracy as on this one as far as it goes and these decals are Keith Marks decals which he still makes unfortunately you really can't get this model house conversion but um, let's zoom this out a little bit but to, to build this you pretty much need to get your hands on one of these AMT 442 kits but you you really need both of them so here's the W30 442 kit and the main thing with this one is it's got the flat hood it doesn't have the Hurst um, stuff but it has all of the um, cold air induction parts under the bumper and the hoses and air cleaner so all of these parts these hoses and this air cleaner are in this kit and these these under the bumper they're in this kit and then the exhaust is a little different you can see the big mufflers and then the manual tranny is in this kit so if you really want to make the actual Hurst holes then you still kind of need this kit too. See in this kit you've got the his and hers automatic shifter and you've got the automatic tranny. So if I pull out the parts here, so here's one of the exhaust trees, the, the one kit, the 442W30 kit has uh, this exhaust but in the other kit here's the automatic tranny with the air cleaner that's for the Hurst Olds. So there's the automatic tranny, which I really should have in that kit, but I don't. And then it's got the automatic pedal and it's got this stuff here. But it's a really nice kit. I could probably, you know, pull one of these out and go farther detail into the kits here. So here's the model house conversion parts. Here's another set because I wanted to do another one. So from model house, and it's too bad they don't make this kit anymore. The model Haas isn't uh, around because they retired. But yeah, here's the 68 bumper. Which you've got to basically cut for that piece of chrome to recess a little higher. And then there's the 68 front bumper with the 442 that I tried to remove. Then the 68 hood. But there's how it was molded here. And then the taillights. Which these, this is your changeover kit from model house or what they sold and uh, I bought this a long time ago for for these builds and then the only other thing is here's some resin vent windows which uh, I had added these are the same ones that I had added here 
and I believe these are um, um, garage cast resin he made these um, I'm not 100% sure it may even be AFX and scale but I'm pretty sure it's garage cast because I got in a couple sets of them but um, they don't make them anymore either that I know of but fabricating those is pretty easy to do and then uh, Keith Marks he still makes the decals but the closest I think anybody's going to get to building this right now is uh, Southern Motorsports Hobbies actually makes um, a resin body they actually copy the entire uh, Johan body so that you can build this car um, the only the only issue with theirs is their bumpers are not chromed and their hood is molded shut but uh, you're getting the entire Johan body but um, that's um, what it would take at this point to build one of these so you see the front the rear but it, it's, a, it's a really nice kit and it builds up really nice. And I've got a few others too, but I plan to take that other one and make it a regular 442 or maybe even a convertible. But um, I haven't gotten that far, but I'd really like to do a 68 442 convertible. But, you know, whether I got to get there or not is another story. But at least I got all the parts and you know how it is. You buy all these kits and all these parts to, to build what you want and whether you get to them or not. But I figured you guys would enjoy this one, and uh, thanks for the suggestion. And and like, all right, you know what? I haven't done an Oldsmobile, so let me feature this one. And you guys should really enjoy it, as it, it's a, a unique car and and a very fun car. And the fact that you know, getting a a, a GM uh, A body with a 455 and 68, it really wasn't anything. There was a couple of 427 Chevelles and then 69. There were a few that were done in 68, but um, this car really hit the mark and to read that they were planning on making 500 that they made 515 of them when they announced the car they had orders for like 2600 of them and uh they didn't there there was no way they can make them uh hearse was not prepared which is funny because you, you look back in history and at the same time they had a different facility doing these they were doing the 68 uh, uh race cars for uh, mopar the Barracudas and the and the Hemi Darts, the Hemi Barracudas and Hemi Darts, and they were strictly race cars. And then Hearst was just getting busier. They had this car with their name on it. They did the the '69 Hearst Olds, but in '69 they were also they got involved with AMC. They were doing the SS um, AMXs for uh, AMC, and they were also helping with the SC Ramblers. And and in the '70 they just kept going, and and they stayed very busy. Um, so it's kind of cool to, to look, you know, what Hearst was doing and, and everything that's going on and trying to put timelines to all of it. It just must have been a madhouse in their facility. But I figured you would enjoy this, and I appreciate you, you know, subscribing and commenting and, and sharing. And you guys, you have a wonderful day, and I will see you next Saturday.